the Monty Show with the very latest on the Michigan cheating scandal. And boy, what a weekend of questions. What a weekend of innuendos and accusations. We found out over the weekend that Ohio State last year went to the college football playoff committee and asked if they were allowed to scout semifinal games of their future opponents in person. And the college football playoff committee said, yeah, you're allowed to do that because by NCAA rule, you can scout future opponents in the postseason. But who knew that soon after that, the CFP and the NCAA got together and they made a rule change to forbid in-person scouting, even in the college football playoff. That, I think, was a big story until the Wall Street Journal this morning dropped another haymaker on Ann Arbor when they reported, I believe it was yesterday, excuse me, that Michigan had pulled the contract extension offered Jim Harbaugh off the table. There is no longer an extension on the table. And really what that means in practical terms is Jim Harbaugh is going to make between 7 and $10 million for the next four seasons at Ann Arbor. And I'm sure by then we will have finality. So this really is a big nothing burger. But Jake, would you say at this point that this cheating scandal, this sign stealing scandal at Michigan football has cost Jim Harbaugh money? Yeah, I mean, there's no way it can't cost Jim Harbaugh money. I mean, anytime you're wrapped up in a scandal, you're you're in a position where you put the program's integrity in doubt. Uh, anything up that alley, you, it's going to cost you money in some form or fashion. Now, whether that's actual fines or unrealized revenue, either way, you're not you're not making that money. So, to me, yes, there's no way that Jim's going to get out of this without costing himself money. But I think. You know, this Wall Street Journal situation is really interesting because this is one of those situations where, you know, they're obviously reporting that the the raise, you know, got rescinded uh, and that Michigan, by extension, is no longer uh, backing the future of Jim Harbaugh at this time. And that's what I think a lot of people got fired up about. Now, you know, obviously, obviously, there's been a lot of speculation whether this is actually true or not true, you know, Michigan defenders are going to tell you, oh, well, it's a Wall Street Journal, grain of salt type situation. And all I'm here to say is, okay, cool. Even if you say the Wall Street Journal is, it, you know, is it doesn't have integrity as a reporting firm or whatever, as a reporting outlet, even even just the idea that they took the time to to write a piece and they say they do have information from sourcing. Somebody saying that Jim... And that that raise and that extension got rescinded. Somebody, right, asked, right. like somewhere down the line, someone said that to them because I know for a fact they're not just making things up. So, so that's why I say like I don't know if it's anyone that matters or what what happened there. So to me, yeah, Jim's cost himself money here, but but I think that we don't know and are incapable at this stage of knowing how much that is because again, if this thing goes you know, the way it's going now, if it just continues on the same path, I do think we're heading for a suspension. I do think we're heading for, you know, a, a, a pretty bad situation. But again, it all depends on how Michigan and the Big Ten act now because we're not going to get NCAA discipline in, in formality until after the season because Michigan's got 90 days to respond to any type of inquiry or any type of anything from the NCAA. So the reality of the situation is, is it's really on Tony Petiti right now to figure out what exactly they're going to do about this and what the right way to go about it is. And nine times out of 10, what do we get? We get, ah, let's just delay it. Let's just spin it. Let's just deny everything. Let's push the, you know, kick the can down the road type situation. But I also don't know what the right thing for the big 10 to do is. This is a costly mistake by Jim Harbaugh. If Michigan is not allowed to participate in the postseason. If Jim Harbaugh is fired, if Michigan's kept out of the college football playoff, this is tens of millions of dollars out the window for Michigan and the Big Ten. It's a lot of money. It is an exceptional amount of money in branding, advertising, recruiting, future wins and losses. Never mind the fees. Never mind the money. Never mind all of that. Just think about the damage to recruiting, the damage to branding, the damage to advertising, the money that your ad partners and brand partners will never realize because you are now not one, not two, but three scandals deep with the NCAA and the FBI. It's remarkable the damage that has been done 
to the Michigan brand. And, and I, I don't see any way that you spin this that Michigan and Jim Harbaugh are not losing money. And again, I think this Wall Street Journal story, I, I think it's true. And I want to play some Jim Harbaugh for you so you can you can see exactly how he's handling it. But, but, but while you listen to Jim, keep in mind, the contract extension doesn't mean a thing. He is not going to be there in the long term. It's not like all of a sudden he's out of contract mm -hmm. at the end of this season. He's got four more years, man. And the guy's going to make between 7 and $10 million each one of those years. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh is not hurting in any way, shape, or form. But you can see, and we're going to play you three clips here. Here's Jim Harbaugh being asked directly about his, his contract and whether or not it's accurate that Michigan pulled it off the table. Jim, there was a report last night that you had a contract offer rescinded. Um, can you say if that's accurate or not? Um, I wouldn't say that's accurate, no. Um, and the university has a policy. I think they made a statement right there. Yes. Of the policy on contracts and publicly talking about it. But wait. So it's not accurate, but you can't talk about it, even though you just talked about it, to say it's not accurate. Come on, guy. Because <laughs> the university has a policy. Oh, and it gets far better, friends. He was asked about uh, his legacy and this cheating scandal, and it's remarkable. He simply doesn't answer the question. Jim, how do you think these allegations and investigations can possibly affect your legacy in, uh, at, at Michigan and this approach? <clears throat> Team is uh, team's refreshed. I'm refreshed. Um, opportunity to um, spend time with the families after a pretty good week of practice uh, last week. Got some things done, and um, you know, we're just we're in an onward onward mode. So I mean, to answer your question specifically, um, it's a one track mind um, that. I'm, uh, I'm modeling, and I and I see it throughout the uh, throughout the program. Clayton, what do you model? Gloves? It's a refence. What, what do you mean you're modeling? To answer your question directly, I'm modeling right now. So wait, the question was: what? How do the allegations potentially affect your legacy? And your answer was: <coughs> Well, the team's <laughs> really well prepared right now. It. I feel good. The team feels good. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I was, I was looking at this blue Jay outside my window. The weather is perfect for those blue Jays, you know, uh, and as far as your the direct answer to your question, suck it. Uh, you Bro, know, what you are know, you talking about, man? Uh, we're on the Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> like just completely not answering. And it's a very good question. Yeah. I think it is. I think it is an excellent question. Jim Harbaugh is correct for not answering it. But he needs to just say, yeah, hey, guys, I'm not going to talk about the the allegations today. I'm not going to talk about any of that. I am here to talk about football. Uh, I am here to talk about getting ready for the rest of the season. Any other questions? I, I'm, I'm just not going to be able to answer them. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I mean, like, how difficult is it? It's not that difficult. And then you you hear, but you hear the questions he's willing to answer, like, you know, Jim talking about fighting the media. Is it a head coach's responsibility to know everything that's going on in the program? Uh, I think that, that question probably answers itself. I, mean, I, was, I was forthright with the, with the statement right away, but you're, you're asking. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Jim, there was a report last week there was an outside investigative firm that may have accessed some videos and files of you got your coaches. Do you know anything about that? And are you guys investigating how that came about? Yeah, I'm not going to get I got a one track mind. I'm not going to be speculating. Um, kind of let others others uh, others speculate that um, the various speculation that's out there would be uh, would be unfair to the team to uh, not just be coaching the team. Do you believe anything was illegally obtained? Just so you guys know, there's only certain things you can comment on. So we got we to gotta move forward. This is not going to be very long. And I can't <laughs> talk about that. Guys, no, we're really focused on Philadelphia right now. I'm here to talk football. Yeah, I'm focused on the Jets today. How difficult is it? We're on to Cincinnati. Right? And then when you give some red-ass answer about how I was completely forthright, my guy, you have a level one violation for being evasive and dishonest with the NCAA. 
the, the, do you guys understand that? That the COVID period recruiting scandal, yeah, where he is already self-imposed a three-game suspension. Mm -hmm. The violations themselves, like watching workouts on Zoom, meeting in person with recruits, those are level two violations, right? He's got a, another more serious level one violation for not being honest with the NCAA. I'm the real. Like, what are we doing? And so somebody asks you about, about the, the, the allegations, and the first thing you say is, well, I was completely forthright in my statement. Oh, you were? No, you. Well, we have reason to doubt that, sir. There are level one allegate or violations that aren't even allegations. Now you were. You're going to get hammered on level one violations. So I'm just, you know, in light of those level one violations where the NCAA said you're a liar, I'm just curious. You know, how when you say forthright, Are we clear on that? I mean, what is you know? How would you define sexual um, relations with that um, wo that woman, President um, Clinton? How would that, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's when I'm talking. That's that's why you don't open the door with, well, you know, it's a we fence. And this week, we, man, the all, yeah, dude, great, awesome. Everything's great. Man, did you guys see the sunrise and the rainbows? Look at the unicorns over there. It's a we fence. You don't have to do that. Just say, I'm not talking about that. I want you to listen to me. Instead of being arrogant and being a jerk about it and chomping on your gum and, Hanging a big guilty sign around your neck by saying, well, you know, um, and well. And looking at your media guy to say, hey, guys, you know, he can't talk about this Like, stuff. totally turns to the media guy off camera <laughs> to Jim's right. Come on. Like, guy, are you going to step in here? Are you going to rescue me? No, because they don't like you. That's because leaks are coming from inside the program. Mm. It's unbelievable to me how unprepared some of these coaches are in, in the middle of scandal. Yeah, who are you, Eberflus? Yeah, it's, seriously, you're walking up to the podium on the Monday after your bye week where we found out the FBI's been on campus for a month. We found out that Michigan is involved and it's not even potentially or maybe Michigan's involved in a massive football cheating scandal. Thanks. And you walked up to the podium prepared to answer those questions? No, I'm going to say you didn't. And that is that is part and parcel to the problem at Michigan. Is you're unprofessional. Because they say professional football coach, Bill Belichick, you walk up to the podium and you say, yeah, I'm focused on Cleveland. Hey, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. On to Cincinnati. Right? Like, we're on the Cincinnati guy. That's all you had to say. But yet you want to open the door because you think you're bulletproof. And I, 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 the problem I have is I can't believe your media relations people, your your athletic director, all of the people in charge with oversight over Jim Harbaugh didn't say, "Hey, at the press conference, we're just gonna we're gonna say we're not talking about that." Yeah, we're really focused on Philadelphia right now. We're not talking about it because nothing good can come from it. You just continue to say guilty, guilty. Guilty. Are you worried about your legacy? Uh, I'm guilty. Yep. Next. Are, like you're, you, 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 there's yes. no right answer, my guy. There's no right answer, Jim. And the other thing that I think Jim Harbaugh is not thinking about, everybody thinks it's a slam dunk. He's getting an NFL job. He's radioactive. He is radioactive. If he walks away from Michigan after this season, there is no Pete Carroll golden parachute. You get that, right? Because he's not winning a national championship. He's not coaching one of the best teams ever. He's flipping Jim Harbaugh. He's a red ass, and a lot of people don't like him. So there's no there's no escape hatch to the NFL here. He's going to be radioactive once he steps out of that job after this season. The other, the other thing is, how do you keep him another year? One, he's not going to be available to you. He is, if he is still the head coach at Michigan, the 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 hammer that the NCAA is going to drop on the Michigan football program, my God. That's I, it, Skippy. I Think of the biggest hammer you can think of. It's not big enough because they're coming, and they are going to suspend, in my opinion, if he keeps that job, they're going to suspend him for all of next season. They are going to drop the hammer because, again, I want you to understand, he's the head football coach at Michigan. Whether he knew or not, he is responsible as the head football coach at Michigan. He's got the FBI, the FBI in his building for a month now investigating his former offensive coordinator and computer crimes. And now it's alleged 
that an inside a firm that was inside Michigan football had access to those computers unearthed that cheating scandal. And did um, they go to Jim? No. Did they go to the school? No. Where did they go? They went to the NCAA. Like you're in trouble and you already have been found guilty of a level one violation. Dude, it, it's it's not a question anymore. Yeah. You're damaging the university. Yeah, and I think that, you know, the thing with with just rolling up to the podium and being prepared to say, yeah, we're, we're on to Cincinnati. We're, you know, we're focused on this. We're like just a auto response to any question related to the scandal, the controversy, right? Then you can speak confidently. Oh, uh, hey, how do you think this damages your legacy? Yeah, you know, we're really focused on our next opponent. Uh, hey, do you think that you're going to lose money in this situation? Yeah, you know, I'm really just focused on on our next opponent. Like, don't play the, hey, like, don't look, to, like, I hate, the, I hate when coaches do that. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, right? You're paid millions of dollars to represent the organization, essentially to be the face of the organization, especially at the college level. This is Michigan we're talking about. You should be able to go up there and beat the media people over the head with, yeah, I'm on, we're on a Cincinnati. But he doesn't do that. And my, my sneaking suspicion as to why he doesn't do that is because he likes to play the game. He enjoys playing the game. He likes. The I'm with what you said last week. He thinks he's unbeatable. Yeah. He thinks. And listen, I understand it's only Purdue. I totally understand that. But isn't this the exact kind of distraction that gets you beat, even at home against Purdue? This feels like. And you look at what's left on the schedule, and what is Michigan's got to be a 30 point favorite in that game, right? But you look at what's left on their schedule. You've got a month and two of the biggest games in Jim Harbaugh's career. Because if he loses at Happy Valley, now, Penn State has been massively underwhelming for the last two weeks. Totally understand it. But if you lose to Penn State, I I, I have a sneaking suspicion Maryland's not going to be the easiest game in the world. Now, Maryland has very clearly come back to earth at two and three in the conference, mm -hmm. right? But then, then you got to end the season at home against Ohio State in the game of the year. And would any of us be surprised if they go two and two in the next four games? Uh, they're a 32 and a half point favorite this week. Oh, Thank you. against Purdue. Thank you. Thank against you. Purdue. And that game's at the house in Ann Arbor. Yeah. And you're a 32 and a half point favorite. Man, I, I'm telling you that there is, if there was ever a distraction, this is it. In the over unders 49, just to put that in perspective. <laughs> They're not expect. They're not <laughs> expecting Purdue to score many points. No, I just look. I, I think that Jim is Jim stays on brand, and and I don't know what it's going to take for this guy to change or to sort of get off, as he said, his one track mind. Right. Yep. Uh, I don't know why we need to complicate things. I don't know why we want to play the game, but clearly he does, and clearly. Um, you know, they're not interested in in answering any questions of any variety. So I just think once again, they don't execute on non-football things very well. Right? Meaning, okay, you don't cheat well, you certainly don't recruit well in the COVID period, and now you don't handle the media well. And Jim's always been a guy that's handled the media a little bit differently, right? Yeah. Like the famous we fence bite is him just kind of joking around. I wouldn't even say that, that was a that was a heated exchange or anything. He was just joking around with the guy that asked him a question. But the point is, is Jim's willing to do that when things are going good. The problem is, is Jim's not willing to, you know, close all the windows, lock all the doors, shut the thing down when he needs to do that. And it's because, like you just said, and my point's been, he thinks he's bulletproof. He thinks they're not going to be able to prove anything. And by the way, if they can prove something, I'll only miss like two games. It's the Big Ten, man. We're fine. Like, that's the strategy. Yeah. It's really unfortunate because I think... Michigan's got great fans. I mean, they're yeah. some of the best fans in college football, and it's 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 completely unnecessary. Do you really do you really need to cheat during the COVID dark period? Do you really need to have an offensive coordinator in your building committing alleged computer crimes? Do you really need to be sending a a football analyst and football interns to 12 different stadiums, eight Ohio State games, allegedly. And many others to steal their signs. You're Michigan, man. You can have any recruit in the country that you want. Every year you have one of the best recruiting classes. 
Every year you're more talented. Yet you have, again, been found guilty of level one and level two violations. Yeah, I mean, it begs a question. I mean, if you're Jim Harbaugh. What are you doing? And and you set aside the $15 or $15,000 they allegedly set aside on a line item budget sheet for this. You had to say to yourself, okay, I'm Jim Harbaugh. This is Michigan. I don't think we're better than Ohio State. Or it was, hey, I'm I'm Jim Harbaugh. Man. This is Michigan. My my seat's getting real hot here at Michigan. I need to beat Ryan Day in the Buckeyes this year. Right? Okay, how can we do that? Well, let's gain an advantage, and let's do it a way that nobody would ever think that we would. And I'm telling you, that's what the thought process was. That, Dude. combined with uh, this staffer, who, you know, is just doing what he wants to do, is all excited about it, former military guy, super into intelligence and scouting. That's how this happened. And and I'm just telling you, you don't do that unless you think that you can't get caught. Unless you think that your scheme is so good that nobody would ever find out. It's so good that you just thought you could stand in broad daylight on the 40-yard line with a video camera. I like, think it is. I think it's going to be incredibly difficult the NCAA, and we we talked about this on Friday, I know, the NCAA isn't going to be able to do anything this year. Yeah. I think the Big Ten is going to be very hesitant to take action against Jim Harbaugh. I think it's going to be incumbent upon Michigan. Well, think about the conference implications here. I mean, if you're Tony Petiti, you're not just considering whether you should or should not punish Michigan. The, the answer is definitively you should punish them. But what does punishing Michigan Come with well, of course, it comes with a can of worms that you're not really interested in opening. Do, and I, I, a lot of people this weekend, and and I heard it a lot on the the national talk shows today. Should Michigan suspend Jim Harbaugh but leave the team in the postseason? I mean, that's certainly an option. I, I think there the the only option Michigan does not have is to do nothing. Right. I, I, I just don't think you can do that. Uh, I, I think it is. I think it's too much of a. It's too much of a blow. I, I could absolutely see suspending Harbaugh with pay pending the outcome of an investigation because the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, there's there's no there's no conjecture about did they do it or did they not. They uh, very clearly, Michigan was involved in sign stealing. You have one of the guys that was paid to go and steal signs on the record, man. Yes, like, yes, yes. This is not a question of did it happen anymore. You have, and I don't mean to keep saying it, you have a head coach with level one and level two violations who's taken a three-game rip already. Uh, you have an FBI investigation, and now you have really difficult cheating allegations against that head coach. Like, It's not a stretch. You need to take him off the field. Now, I can understand why the Big Ten and Michigan don't want to take the football team out of the postseason. I totally understand that. It is really difficult to get to where Michigan is. You have to be elite talent, elite developers. Like, you have to work hard to get to where Michigan is. But I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do. And I've heard all kinds of suggestions. I, I think suspending Jim Harbaugh, is the beginning, it is not the end. Yeah, and I think, you know, th this type of behavior is behavior fitting of a smaller program that's trying to play with the big boys, yeah. right? I mean, you, you, you like, this This would be fitting of some school that's in a Power 5 conference that has no chance to win a conference trying to get into the college football playoff. Okay, at least I understand it. You don't have the talent to compete, so let's close that gap by cheating by getting their signs. Okay, I understand it at least. It's still illegal, but I understand it. This is why I don't love Jim Harbaugh the same way people do. Because this guy's operating with a small program mindset. Instead of just saying, you know what? We're Michigan. We allegedly have a Heisman Trophy contending quarterback. Yeah. And we have this outstanding defense, allegedly. So if you have all that, just go out and compete. And yeah. it is what it is, but that's not good enough. Yeah, I, I think it is incredibly difficult to just to just to just look past this right like it's incredibly difficult to just say to yourself yeah i'm gonna yeah you know i think i'm just gonna we're just gonna play this off until the season's over you you can't do that if you're michigan you you just cannot do it um and i think it is yeah i think it's incredibly difficult yeah uh, i really do all right Less of us, more of you. Uh, let's get to our daily dose of the Buck Shot from Bucked Up, the official energy provider of the Monty Show. 
Uh, boy, have I been banging the buck up this weekend. I had a great weekend of workouts. Um, I have really, and I say it all the time on the show, we've worked really hard to be in better shape on the show. We're losing weight. And I want you to use this product. It's free for you to use it. There's six free buckshot in the description below. Go and get it. Bucked up energy makes the best energy shot. And if you think about five hour energy or any of the other energy shots out there, the difference is always in the ingredients. And at Bucked Up, you know that you're getting elite ingredients that make an elite product that do exactly what they tell you it's going to do. And as far as Buckshot's concerned, it's 200 milligrams of naturally sourced caffeine with a bunch of brain food. There are no spikes. There are no drops. It's simply a nice level energy bump that gets you through the rest of your day so that every day is your best day. The TPS report, if you will, the Excel spreadsheet, the pivot table, the conference call, that long drive home where you're always nodding, right? Maybe it's just that one o'clock carb crash after you and the boys went out to lunch. Hit a bucked up buck shot right now in the description of the show below. Get six free every day at this time. Let's do this. Let's go. Cheers to you. Yes, sir. There it is. We'll tell you in two hours because we're gonna we're gonna feel great every single day on the show. You wanna you wanna know exactly what it's best for. Yesterday, uh, Mrs. Monty and I were rolling around, had that real mild headache. You know, like I just wasn't feeling myself. Hit a buck shot, boom. Didn't notice it until it's like, oh man. Like two hours later, it's like, man, my headache's gone. I feel good. Boom, out of here. It was awesome watching the NFL. I loved it. All right, let's get your comments in here on the Jim Harbaugh situation. Direct question. What do you think is going to happen? Will the Big Ten take action? Do you think Michigan takes them off the field? Does nothing happen for the rest of the year? And Jim Harbaugh is allowed to coach through the college football playoff. What do you guys think happens in this case? All right, a couple of shout outs first. Uh, Aaron Wilson gifts one Monty show member. Let's go. The Monty uh, exclusive Instagram members only group has been rocking uh, with prize picks all weekend. In the description is our prize picks link. Great prize picks weekend on the Monty show. Great life weekend, sports weekend. We talked all about college football in that group as the games are happening. Nine ninety to mine a month. Just hit the join button. And you pay $9.99 a month, you get into that members-only group. For $1.99, all your comments are highlighted in red. So Dakota and, or Aaron, thank you. Dakota Tubbs with five members. Let's go. Let's go, Dakota. Appreciate you. Ryan Willie for $5. In my opinion, the longer it takes to do something, the less likely anything will be done. I would totally agree with that. I think if the problem is, I don't know how much more damning evidence can come out. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of the the all of the smoking guns are out. I mean, employees of the football department, financial links to those employees, interns at the direction of that employee, uh, contractors essentially who, you know, this football analyst just gave this person cash tickets and said, hey, I'm going to send you a link to a, a, a cloud account that you can upload these videos to. Go to this game, videotape this sideline, good to go. That's what happened, according to one of the people who went to the games. They have videotaped evidence of people at the games like, what more do we need? You know the tickets that were bought. You know who bought them. You know how they bought them. I mean, the smoking guns are already there. I don't know if if something, if some new revelation comes out on this, this cheating scandal, it'd be stunning because it's already bad. I don't know how much worse it could get. So... Ryan, you might be right. The longer it goes on, the less likely they are to act. Uh, big blue horses for $5. The biggest NCAA hammer is the death penalty. The problem is there is no such thing as a death penalty. The death penalty is dead. You're never going to see it again. It is. It basically is a... I mean, they, they take sports away from you for a year. Not football, not basketball. No sports of any kind at your university for a year. You're, they've said you're never going to see that again. The death penalty is not going to happen. What is going to happen, What what the worst penalty you could get, it would be a massive reduction in scholarships, a massive reduction in allowable recruiting activity, um, a massive reduction. Like one of the things I think you're going to see at Michigan because there are um, allegations in the the level two investigation 
that they misused and overused uh, coaches in the football department, reduction in football staff. They're going to make it more difficult for you to operate at a high level because you got caught in level one and level two violations. So are there crippling things they can do? Yeah, they can completely reduce your scholarships. They can reduce your ability to go out and recruit and to have recruits come to you. Um, no postseason play, bull bands, stuff like that. That's incredibly damaging. You're If you don't have an ability to recruit new talent into your program, you know, I, you're, you're going to struggle. And there is some belief that they are working on new bylaws that will also include the NCAA have some having some ability to turn you off in the transfer portal. And if that happens, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a game changer, no doubt. 